Good morning and welcome to a full day of eating. Now, before I get into what breakfast is, I will say that I understand this isn't realistic for everyone's schedule, but since we do have some flexibility within our schedule, we wake up around 5 a.m. and we work until 7.30 for myself. I take the dogs on a walk and then I come back and I make breakfast and it's our first real break for the day. So this is the meal that takes me the longest to make, but it's also one of both of our favorite meals. So it is worth it to us. It's a good time to have a break and have some time together, but let's go ahead and get into to what we're eating. We're about to see me unpack my whole friggin' fridge. This is every morning. I always save my uh, scoopers from protein so I can use it in things like this. I am having my favorite green banana pancakes. These have been a staple in my breakfast for over two years and I have not gotten tired of them. I bet Alex is gonna be appalled that I'm wearing this shirt on camera. These pancakes are made with some really solid ingredients like frozen bananas, frozen spinach, oats, and of course my favorite cinnamon cereal legion protein. Alex normally has a burrito or a quesadilla, but we recently switched to making tacos. So with the quesadilla, we had to have more cheese to make it stick together, but being able to move to tacos, we were able to lower the amount of cheese and lower the fat content, making it a meal that fits into his routine and his macros a lot better while still being something he really enjoys. Making the bacon first is integral because it allows you to have the bacon grease for the hash browns, which just elevates the experience altogether. Even so much for myself that now I track extra bacon and hash browns so I can have a serving while I'm making his. The taco consists of grilled chicken, bell peppers, center cut bacon, eggs, egg whites, hash browns, some reduced fat Mexican shredded cheese, and of course, some sort of hot sauce. Is breakfast. I like this and my second meal being a little bit bigger meals, but I'll have this work for a little bit, get ready to film some more things that we are getting together for another video and eat lunch after that. Good morning. Good morning. Does your head belong on this? Yes. No, no, no. Fatty, fatty, fatty. No, 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 no. Thank you. You're welcome. That's good. Breakfast is definitely the most time intensive and the rest of the meals look like this where I'm just cutting them open and dumping them into a pan, which is exactly what we need for how crazy our lifestyle is. For lunch, I'm eating a meal that just like breakfast, I've eaten for about two years nonstop and still loving it. It's super simple with some jasmine rice, ground 99% lean turkey and spinach. I also season it with turmeric and Lowry's. The great thing about meals like this is they are extremely adjustable as your macros change going through dieting, where I can change the amount of turkey or the amount of rice and even what I'm topping it or eating it with, because you'll also see that I eat it with some chips on the side, which is just a very special thing for me because I love tortilla chips and a rice cake with peanut butter and fiber. And when we look at the breakdown of this meal, it's a great amount of protein, a solid amount of carbs and a solid amount of fats to make sure that I can feel full and satiated as I go through the rest of my workday. 
If Alex were here right now, he would be eating either his sweet and sour chicken, this beef with sweet potato squash and rice, or his favorite when the weather gets warmer is some pasta salad. These are all prepped in advance, and if you go ahead and check out the video that pops up right here, you'll be able to see how I meal prep and bulk prep in advance. The great thing about having these vacuum sealed is I can throw them in the freezer and move them over to the fridge when they need to thaw. It's also incredible because it allows me to grab and go. If travel comes up, everything's prepped, ready to go, and I don't have to add more to my plate. The words that almost came out of my mouth were, I'm doing everything but sleep. Why aren't things progressing? It's the cornerstone of seeing fat loss. Oftentimes people get so caught up in just doing the physical things. I'm getting my nutrition in. I'm doing all my training. I'm doing all my cardio. That's all that matters. Whereas if you don't have the sleep, really, like you said, none of that matters. If if anyone who's following along is doing this with their significant other and, and you're in the position that we are also in, in the sense that I have more body fat to lose than you. It's also challenging where we're doing the same thing and I'm having more scale progress. It's not because you're doing anything wrong. It's just that I have more body fat to lose. Thus, things are gonna move a little bit more quickly. It's just that our bodies are different and there is a lot to be celebrated within that, even if there can be some frustrations along the way. Wait, I forgot something much better. When building out my meals, I think of a few things. Number one is going to be taste and enjoyment, of course, but then I'm also looking at digestibility. For my third meal, I like to go with a shake or a bar or sometimes both to make it the full macros for a meal. I lean towards these because when it comes to meal three, I might be running out for an errand and this is something easily digestible and that I can have on the go. It's also great when I am sitting at home because I can have this at my desk or I can have it and drink it quicker than I would would eat a meal and get back to work so that I'm able to have dinner with Alex, which is really what we enjoy to be able to do. This shake is really only carbs and protein. So I do like to add something like this midday square that's gonna add some fats and some fiber just to keep me satiated longer. Normally I don't use a straw for this. This shake is super easy and customizable. For me, I only had four ingredients, simply orange juice, of course, some Legion protein, and I decided to go with two fruits that I love, strawberries and mango. This is easily adjustable, not only the amounts of each ingredient, but the ingredients themselves. Maybe you don't wanna use orange juice, you choose a different juice or maybe a cashew milk. Maybe you don't like strawberries or mango and you wanna go with some bananas or some pineapple. It's your choice and you can make it how you like it. Now I'm not having the same exact meal I had for breakfast, but we're about to head out of town and I wanted to have some food prepped for while I am out of town. Since we are about to hit the road, I wanna make sure that the meal makes sense to eat in the car. So normally I would be having a rice meal with some sort of protein, but in this case, I'm actually just gonna have a Nash bar and some carbs. I think I'm gonna go with a peanut butter chocolate chip and then some rice cakes to make sure that I hit my goals today. Today was a super crazy day, but I wanted to truthfully show you how I navigate food for a day in my life. Week two is done and I have to give you massive flowers because last week you said you wanted to improve on sleep and you did just that. I did, and it was reflective on the scale. I saw my weight continue to come down and hitting a, an average of 219.4, which was fantastic for me. So it was a, a week full of great progress. Now for myself, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty frustrated. I started off with my cycle starting a week late. So the first week of the diet was my cycle. And I knew that the scale was going to be, I had a good few days and I got hit with a stomach bug. 
and it was just so discouraging to feel like I was checking so many of the boxes and not seeing the progress. And I think people get into this when they first start dieting and maybe they have a few things out of their control come up like a menstrual cycle or getting sick and they immediately want to lower their food or increase activity so that they see that reflected in the scale. And I'm really thankful that I have you for an unbiased look, but also that I know that I just need to keep doing the right things and controlling the controllables so that I can have the response that I want here. That's a big reason why I didn't change things. Now, I, because I've had such great sleep, have been feeling amazing, and my training has been going exceptionally well. I'm feeling well recovered from my training, but I won't lie, I've been experiencing a little bit of greater fatigue with my steps being as consistent as they have been, as well as going to yoga. I've been getting a little bit more fatigued, having to push through a little bit more and be more resilient, but I know that pushing through this, I'll get to a point where I have much better recovery and feel great. My training has felt really solid, but because of the stomach bug, I was experiencing some really bad fatigue from Friday to Sunday. So I'm glad that I took time to rest a little bit, not hit my steps some of those days, doctor's orders, and make sure that I was able to recover. So going into this next week, I'm able to see the progress I want. Did you guys get that? I'm the doctor. In episode one, I talked about making adjustments to nutrition, training, or cardio every two or three weeks. We're at the conclusion of week two, and I'm not going to make adjustments just yet. I wanna get another week of data points, especially with Sue having her menstrual cycle as well as getting the stomach bug. We don't have 100% accurate data to really go off of to make adjustments, and so we're gonna have one more week. She's not gonna get a stomach bug. She's not going to have her menstrual cycle. She's gonna have a super successful week, and then we may make some adjustments. That being said, we won't have an inside the diet this week. Now, in the previous video, I showed you guys comparisons of the physique photos and I drew circles around the areas that we were seeing changes. Did you guys enjoy that? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Of the non-negotiables that we have in place, what was a highlight for you this past week? I was very happy that I stuck with my chores. This is the one when we first started this that I thought I was going to fumble the bag on and we're two weeks in. Still got it. What about you? I would say just how I managed my steps. I saw that I was overshooting and I was able to make a better plan going into this next week uh, just to make sure I hit exactly what I needed to. That's a wrap on week two. If you guys have any questions throughout this whole series or any ideas or topics you'd like us to cover, then make sure that you leave a comment down below. But otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.